Let's talk about the 1827 matchups. I know I'm a little late on the predictions for the 1827 matchups, but we didn't even know who was playing till last night. Regardless, it wouldn't have changed my opinion on this series, which is why I thought it didn't matter too much. I have Boston winning in four, maybe five, if the Hawks can take a game. I don't think it's going to be a very long series. I did really like the fight I saw from the Hawks because they were down like 32 and they cut it to 12. So they did a pretty good job. And honestly, they had all the momentum. They could have made a real push, but then Boston called a timeout and Boston got three straight possessions and then it was kind of over from there. The Hawks did cut it again to 12, I think. Like they went on another little run, but at that point it was a little too late. Like if they had kept cutting it after that first run, would have been something. But yeah, I like the fight. I don't think it's going to be a long series, though. Boston in 4-5. or five. Then in the West, we have the Timberwolves versus Denver. The Timberwolves are one of those teams that you never know what to expect from them. Because we saw them, like, basically dominating the game against the Lakers. And then in the fourth quarter, they just didn't do anything that they did in the first three quarters to dominate the game. They do have talent, though, because Anthony Edwards, listen, he can ball. He was an all-star. And Anthony Edwards can drop 40 on any night. Cat has been really, really impressive in these two playing games. So they definitely have star power. And so they could get a game or two. I do think overall, though, I do think Denver is going to win this series probably in five. Maybe. This, I don't know if it's going to be a sweep. I honestly, I can't count the Wolves out to get like a game. Maybe two. Because listen, they could play at a super high level. It's just like the fourth quarter. So Denver in five, maybe six, but I'll go five. Then we got the matchup that everybody wants to talk about, the Lakers versus the Grizzlies. It's actually kind of crazy to me how few people are picking the Grizzlies to win this series. And I obviously understand who they're up against. LeBron James, and you got Anthony Davis, and they've had a really good defense since the trade deadline. Memphis is also down Steven Adams and Brandon Clark, who are their two best rebounders and some rim protection. So I understand that they're also missing over there. This is the toughest matchup for me to pick a winner because both teams have their advantages and disadvantages. Like, the Grizzlies love to play fast. That plays in their favor, not the Lakers' favor. But again, with Steven Adams and Brandon Clark out, that benefits the Lakers because they can just go to the paint a lot easier. And then are you going to get Jaron Jackson Jr. in trouble? I talked about in the X-Factor video. I'm going to go Grizzlies and six. I don't know. This is so hard. I'm going Grizzlies and six, though. And lastly, the Bucks versus the Heat. I understand Miami has been disappointing to a lot of people this year, but besides that playing game with the Hawks, like, I've never seen them play so lackluster. I don't expect them to be like that in the playoffs, hopefully. <laughs> so with that being said, Miami is just a tough team. They always play tough. Obviously, I think the Bucks win. I think they win in six, which I know people are going to be like, well, you see the way Miami's been playing? How are they going to get two games? I think they could do it, so I'll go six, but it could be five, but I'll go six.